people in first period didn't finish everything, so I'm not really sure why, but they uh, weren't able to get all their models uh, complete, so I don't want to, I just want them to have to stay up in class and work on their passing period. Anyway, so the lab won't be doing until Friday, and there'll be something else posted uh, for our asynchronous Wednesday, and good news, I hope you all got the message last night from Mr. Palfrey that um, Monday the 5th, which was supposed to be a day off after Easter, then they said we had to use it for a makeup day. Um, we changed it to asynchronous, which means it's like Wednesdays. So you're not meeting, you're just getting work done for your attendance. Of that week, yes. Yeah. Almost said yes. So, but not on the Monday after Easter, which people had already planned on not being here for. So I think that was a smart decision. <laughs> even though it was our Wednesday, but that's okay. I do. I think it's going to be uh, run differently. So if people are on distance only, which will still be an option because we'll still have COVID, uh, I think we'll still have COVID as an option. That will be a different program. They won't, they'll be, we haven't worked out all the bugs, but I think uh, it'll be 8.05 to 3.10 and Wednesday late starts and all the normal stuff. But <laughs> I don't have a crystal ball, so <laughs> I don't know. That's just what I'm expecting. And we know how that doesn't always work out. All right, so you should have a note sheet in your classwork from yesterday. I um, promise I will remember to make up a bigger electronegativity table. The one that's here, I shrunk it to fit on your notes, but then you can't read the numbers very well unless you change it to 200. So, and even then it's a little small. So um, I'll give you a full size uh, one of these um, this afternoon. And why is that important? Because we have to use electronegativities for each element to calculate the bond character and determine if we have a polar or non-polar bond. So let's jump into that and pick up where we left off. So this segment on bond polarity. And again, the notes are for you, not for me. Left here. Yes, yes. Boop. All right, so remember there's bonds inside of molecules. In molecular bonds, and there's bonds between molecules or forces. I think it actually is better if you call them forces and then you're less likely to get confused, but you can still get confused. How do I know? Because I get confused. So intramolecular bonds make compounds, make molecules, intermolecular forces is how we get salts and liquids. And um, electronegativity, normally I'd Maybe I should just print these up for you guys anyway. Normally I print these up and give you um, a hard copy of the electronegativity scale. There's slight variations. Like on this one, it says cesium and francium are 0.7. On the one on your um, note sheet, it says 0.8. It's not that big of a deal, um, but there is slight variation on some of them. So um, the type of bond inside a molecule is characterized based on the electronegativity difference of the two atoms involved. So remember the atoms are, um, the book uses this cute little tug of war thing, and the atoms have a nucleus that's positive, pulling on the electrons. The electrons are supposed to be a little knot on the tug of war. And each nucleus wants those electrons. Wants, in quotes, because positive is attracted to negative, positive is attracted to negative. So there's this back and forth between the two nuclei. When we look at these numbers that Linus Pauling and others have uh, calculated for us, we can determine what type of bond is going on between those two atoms by simply subtracting them. We just take the absolute value. We don't do anything special. And um, the values that we're gonna use for our class, and you might get different ones in your college classes, it's hard to say, but non-polar, covalent, again, the covalent part is sharing valence electrons, Nonpolar covalent runs from zero to 0.3 difference. 
Polar covalent is 0.4 to 1.9. Anything 2.0 or larger is considered an ionic bond. What does that mean? It means completely, the electrons are completely on the higher value atom. So for example, if we take our little tiny uh, electronegativity 0.7 or 0.8 cesium, and that's a metal, right? And bond it to 3D fluorine. Fluorine's electronegativity, what's the scale go up to? What's the highest value? It's really strange. Four. So four minus 0.7 or 0.8 is 3.2 or three, depending on which number you use. So the electrons go to fluorine, okay? They're not on the cesium, the valence electrons. Um, this is the table from your book, and I put the, um, my modified one on there. If you look at this, <laughs> it's really kind of dumb. The high end of one type is the low number for the other. So if you get a 0.4 difference, which one is it? Um, you have no way of figuring that out. It's kind of dumb. So uh, I just made 0.3 and uh, 1.1 for this one. And then our book breaks it into four different bond characters. Um, we're not going to use that many. We're just going to use three. So most books that I've used, um, the maximum for nonpolar is 0.3. Some books actually list it as 0.2. Ours has it as 0.4. That's really high. Um, and then again, this this whole 0.4 to 2.0, we can't have 2.0 because that's the same as the, uh, as ionic. So it's going to be 0.4 to 1.9. And we're not going to worry about moderately polar covalent and very polar covalent. We'll just polar covalent. Okay. So I try to simplify it. The numbers that are on your sheet are the ones that we're going to use. Okay. All right. Next question. It's kind of a silly question, but I have to ask it. Um, Diatomic elements, remember there's seven of them, okay? Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Why are they all nonpolar molecules? Turn to your neighbor and tell them. Why are they nonpolar? There's a very good reason. Look at your little chart on your note sheet. Why would they be nonpolar? Anybody? Why are they not polar? What's the electronegativity of hydrogen? 2.1. What's the electronegativity of this hydrogen? 2.1. What's 2.1 minus 2.1, which is kind of what you're saying, I think, Gabby? Zero. Big old goose egg, right? Electronegativity of chlorine, 3.0. It's the same as the electronegativity of this chlorine. 3.0 minus 3.0 is yeah, zero. So all of the diatomic, two of the same atom, kind of atom, stuck together are going to have the difference of nothing because they're the same. Okay, so they all have nonpolar bonds. On the other hand, when you start talking about hydrogen carbon, there's a difference. Or you talk about hydrogen and chlorine and hydrochloric acid. There's a difference. And that creates what we call polar <coughs> molecules. Okay. In a polar covalent bond, there's unequal <coughs> sharing. <coughs> so for my silly example, because I will talk to you, um, the your parent or your grandma or whatever tells you to share your cookies with your younger sibling. And you got four cookies. How many are you going to give to your little brother or sister? <laughs> one after my own heart. Half a one. One. Those of you said two. You're so nice. <laughs> I would not give my brother two. Nope. Mm -mm. I shared one. I gave him one. You know, get off. <laughs> you got some. So unequal sharing, just a silly example. So unequal sharing happens in hydrogen chloride. Chlorine is a 3.0. Hydrogen is a 2.1. That's the difference of 0.9. What does that mean? That means one side of the molecule is a little bit positive. 
one side's a little bit negative, but the molecule as a whole, you gotta keep in mind, is neutral. But another thing, and we'll talk about this on Thursday, is these will also cause these molecules to orient a certain way. Would the two negatives go together? Oh, would the two positives go together? They're gonna line up and organize so that positive is next to negative, okay? And that's uh, another discussion I'm kind of jumping my guns here. But this is considered a polar molecule because one side is kind of positive and one side's kind of negative. Overall charge is still zero, but the electrons live next to the chlorine more of the time. So the other way to do it, besides using the, the deltas, is to use a little arrow with a plus on the less electronegative side and the arrowhead pointing to the atom that has the greater electronegativity value. That's where the electrons are headed, if you will. Okay, so again, you get the slight charge difference, not huge, but it is there and it does affect their behavior. So if you just write the chemical formula, you can also do the arrow on that. You can also do it with dot diagrams. Okay, and you can write the deltas or you can do the arrow. It doesn't matter. This is just all different ways of doing the exact same thing. Okay. Right. Unequal sharing. I think that's everything I want. Uh, usually we just call them polar bonds. Um, so there, you have to be careful because you can have polar bonds in a molecule and not have a polar molecule. And we'll figure that out in a minute. Or excuse me in a day or two in Thursday's lecture. So these are intramolecular bonds. No. Intrapolar, <coughs> I'm not sure what you just asked me. Oh, that was from before. Thank you. Yes, yeah, I went over that at the beginning. All right. All right, and then a silly little cartoon because it's Star Wars and <laughs> I know it's it's terrible to hit you with that, right? So Han Solo cup, get it? Solo cup, a Wookie cookie. Oh, right, sorry. Thank you for laughing. Appreciate it. All right, we'll finish that discussion later. Any questions right now? Beautiful. Any questions from the home front? Okay. Uh, those of you here in class are going to pick up uh, with the document that is here. I also made a table for part two, part three, to grab one of those. Do you guys not yet? Not yet. Hang on. Hang on. I just want to uh, remind you um, the lab's not due tomorrow. Um, but you probably, some of you are going to get done probably before the end of class. You can work on your post lab questions. The very, uh, excuse me, this is a pre lab question. The first question asks how do we represent in these molecules, how are we representing a single bond? What do we use to make a single bond between two of the spheres? The little wooden peg, the dowel, okay? So the dowel is a single bond, a shared pair of electrons. How do we make double bonds? With the springs. How many springs? Two. How do we make a triple bond? Three springs, all right? I just want to make sure that's clear. Because you will need to use the springs in part three. All of the openings on the spheres need to have a dowel or a spring in them. That's really important whether you're building single bonds, double bonds, or triple bonds, everything has to be accounted for, and the best way to figure it out is to do your dot diagrams. Okay, and um, yeah, so you can just do those on here. Also, the pre-lab questions ask you to draw some things, so you can do them on the back of your um, first data table from yesterday. All right, any other questions about today's stuff? Go back to the boxes. Those of you at home, hang on for just a second. So, home peeps. 
Um, we have a simulation that you're using, and you got started on this. I think someone actually finished the whole thing yesterday. Um, what I'd like you to do is, once you get into it, um, the first part is the model part, right, that you should have worked on yesterday. Down at the bottom of the screen on the lower part that says real molecules, and there's a drop down menu, and it'll actually come up with water first. I had it from last period. So remember to spin them around for the heck of it. It's kind of cool. These are the lone pairs. And then between the hydrogens on water, it's 104 and a half. You'll have to check the molecular bond and you'll have to check bond angles. Okay. But there's, um, you're not doing all of these, but you're doing, I forget how many. Um, and then again, it says to do 3D sketches. So if you would be so kind as to insert a picture, you can just do it. I know not everybody has a printer, so you can just do the drawings on a piece of paper and then insert a picture. You do that by clicking in the menu, clicking on image, and then upload your image from wherever it is. And that way I'll have it um, to scan so you don't have to try and draw them here. Okay. Questions I can answer for those of you at home. Everybody. Everybody's good at home, you know, everything's